So my name is Sijo. Uh, I work for Microsoft in the observability platform team. And in OpenTelemetry, I work mostly, or I used to work mostly in .NET, and recently I moved to work on uh, OpenTelemetry Rust. Uh, my colleague was supposed to join me, but he got sick, so I'm going to do the entire presentation myself. So today we'll talk about uh, some of the design decisions or some of the challenges we faced while implementing Metrics SDK in OpenTelemetry.net. So we'll cover the challenges and how we overcome that and what are the design choices we made. So let's start with the problem statement. What is the task be, uh, before you if you were to implement OpenTelemetry metrics? So on the, uh, my screen it's left, so uh, you have a bunch of raw measurements where I'm just making it extremely simple. So here uh, someone is using OpenTelemetry to count the number of fruits they have sold. So it could be like apple in red color or bananas in yellow and things like that. Uh, so the real output, the output which is expected from a metric system is the summarized data. So how many red apples you sold, how many yellow bananas you sold, and things like that. Uh, so that's the like very simplified version of the problem which an SDK is supposed to solve. So you get raw measurements, you produce a compressed or aggregated metrics. Uh, one interesting thing to note here is it doesn't matter how many fruits you sell or it doesn't matter how many raw measurements you get, you have a predictable output because you are going to compress them and aggregate them, you have a reasonably uh, upper bound on the amount of uh, aggregated data you have. Uh, of course, I'm not uh, like going to detail about the cardinality explosion at all, but this is just the very simplified version of the problem statement. Uh, before solving the problem, I just want to state like these are the goals and principles which we've been keeping in mind because in case of conflicts, what criteria we would use to resolve them. So we want the metrics to be trustworthy. Uh, so what I really mean by that is like the red apples should not be counted against yellow banana, things like that. But there are many places within the metrics where you can uh, afford to like cheat a little bit to get better performance. Uh, but I won't uh, cover that in details here, but mostly we just expect the uh, SDK to be doing a trustable job. You, you need like fidelity, you cannot uh, randomly uh, make like one metric which is supposed to be of let's say red banana or red apple going into a different uh, category. So that's why I really mean by like trustworthiness. Performance is uh, most critical for uh, metrics as compared to like traces or logs because in traces you can like tune up the sampling and for logs you can also do some sort of like filtering like log level adjustment. But for metrics it's almost like always on, like you cannot really adjust so you need the performance to be uh, extreme. So we usually measure that in nanoseconds, not not like more than a few hundred nanoseconds. Uh, no heap allocation, um, I mean, .NET being a GC language, we expect there would be, uh, there should be like zero heap allocation, and no logs, uh, like we don't want like threats to try to compete for acquiring a log and reduce the throughput. So these are like some of the performance goal we have. And lastly, but very importantly, we want the memory consumption or the resource construction to be capped. So this is very important, like no matter what the input is, so even if a really malicious uh, input is fed into the system, you want the output to be capped. Uh, one example is uh, many people use uh, metrics to figure out like you are, like are you under a DDoS attack? So let's say someone is making a DDoS attack. You don't want the app to go down just because of OpenTelemetry itself because you're going to rely on OpenTelemetry to know that, to detect that you are under an attack. So the last thing you want is the app to crash because your OpenTelemetry is going to take indefinite amount of memory. So these are some of the design goals which we were keeping in mind. Now, the entire problem is like split into like the API side of things, uh, open telemetry matrix API and then SDK. So let's start with the API. So API has one single job, which is to accept the raw measurements. The raw measurement would involve a numerical value like one, two, some number, or it could be floating, along with zero or more attributes. So in case of the example which I'm using, it's the name and color, uh, those are the two attributes. Now the very fact that the number of attributes are variable, like it could be zero, it could be one or any, that means like the API has to accept like some sort of like variable number of arguments. Now the most simple way of doing that is uh, params in .NET or list or array, or dictionary, or if you want to be like more abstract, something like I enumerable uh, in language like .NET. The problem with any of these option is it does allocate. So either it, it's a data structure on the heap, or it has to box something in, so it has to allocate. So that's not acceptable, because we want the API to be like zero allocation. Uh, so here's what we did to prevent the allocations. Uh, so what we found that was in most common cases, people need like 
up to three attributes, which is the most common case. So we provide like dedicated over, I'm, I'm using counter throughout, but pretty much everything is applicable to other instruments, but for simplicity, I'm only using counter. So here, like for the counter.add, we provide dedicated overloads for one, two, or three. So as you can see, like the first three, uh, there is no need of allocation, no list, no array, nothing. And for more than three, uh, we create a custom data structure called tag list. Uh, so it's a stack data structure, or uh, it, it's called like structure in .NET, so it's not allocated in the heap, and it's internally special cased for up to eight attributes. So if you have eight key value pairs, it's internally going to store it in a top level field. And anything more than eight, uh, we'll start allocating. So up to eight, we are like zero allocation. Uh, so that's all I would mention about API. Uh, even though the, the bulk of the work is occurring in the SDK, it's important to get the API side uh, correct because if the API is going to allocate, then no matter how many how much optimization you do in the SDK, you still still have a non-performant SDK. Uh, now let's talk about the SDK side of things. So this is the meat. This is the core of the uh, entire uh, problem. Uh, so conceptually, what an SDK is supposed to do is it's very much similar to what I showed in the beginning. You get a bunch of raw measurements, you aggregate that and produce a something conceptually what I'm showing in the right side. Uh, so the entire problem within the SDK can be, or the, the operation which the SDK has to do when it receives a raw measurement can be thought of as two steps. One is, one, once you get a measurement, figure out which metric point or which time series this is going to accumulate into. So that's usually done by like some sort of lookup uh, for all the keys and values. That's the first half of the problem. And second is you have to do the actual aggregation. And it could be, in case of counter, it's very simple. You just do the mathematical sum. But for complex instruments like histogram, it's more involved like you have to do like min, max, count, sum, and also optionally the histogram buckets. Uh, but anyway, there are two aspects of the problem. First one figure out, given an incoming measurement, figure out which time series it belongs to, and second, do the actual math. Now, with this simple conceptual overview, uh, we can translate that into code, uh, and, and I'll call it as a very naive implementation, or the most simplistic impl implementation. We just use a dictionary or a hash map in certain languages. You create a hash map where the key is the key value pair collection, and the value is the actual number itself. So whenever you get a measurement, all you need to do is you take a lookup, I mean, you acquire a log because you want it to be thread safe, do a lookup in the dictionary and find out which where this measurement belongs and then, then do the increment. Uh, that's very simple and it works mostly. However, it must be obvious that if you're going to take, if you're going to do a continuous update of the dictionary under a log, it won't scale very well. Like if you throw more CPUs at it, we expect it to scale, but it won't. So let's look at the actual performance number. So here on the horizontal axis, you have the number of CPU cores, and on the vertical axis, it's the throughput. So how many measurements can you do per second? That's the uh, uh, y-axis. So as you can see, like when we went from like one to two to three cores, we started like increasing the throughput from four million to roughly like eight million per second, which is very respectable. But after that, we started seeing the contention effect where the threads were just competing to acquire the log. So the performance just started dropping, and no matter how much CPU I throw at it, it won't, uh, it won't get any better. In fact, it's, it started dropping. I didn't have a 32 core machine, otherwise, uh, I mean, I could have shown more numbers where it's actually going to get worse and worse and worse. Uh, so that's not acceptable because one of our goal was no contention. We wanted to nicely scale with the hardware. Uh, so let's see how, how, how we can solve this problem. I know that many languages have already solved it, so I'm just going to explain how .NET solved it. Pretty uh, good chance that other languages follow the similar approach. Uh, so if you look at the metrics uh, SDK, I say, like from conceptual point, the most common operation is not adding or removing something from the dictionary. It is just doing a lookup and updating an existing point. Uh, because we don't expect people to like keep uh, randomly producing more and more attributes. It's, it's always a fixed set. So once you saturate that limit or once you hit the once you like hydrate your dictionary with all the key value pairs, it's mostly lookup. You don't really need to like remove or add anything new. So with that knowledge, uh, what we are trying to, what we, uh, what we did was, instead of storing the actual value in the dictionary, we stored the actual metric in a different location, in a memory location, separate from the dictionary, and have the dictionary point at it. Now what this gives us is, once you do the lookup, uh, you, you're not going to update the dictionary itself. You update, in, you, you update the metric value which is residing in a different point. 
So by doing this, you effectively make this a read heavy dictionary. You're not going to like uh, write anything or you're not going to update anything because once you do the lookup, you just know which memory location you are supposed to uh, update. And the updates will be done in the metric points and they are like done independent of the dictionary. So from the dictionary or a hash table standpoint, it's mostly like just reads. Now with that, uh, we use concurrent dictionary in .NET, which has a nice property that reads do not require any logs. So that means as long as we are doing log, I mean, as long as we are doing reads, we are not going to face the contention problem, which means we would be able to scale very nicely. And also, like the individual updates of the, the metric points, they have to still be done like in a thread safe way, but that can be let, done in a very localized way. Like most often we use the interlocks, so the native atomic instruction, so there won't be any contentions there as well. So with this, uh, the, the performance numbers are here. This is the same stress test. The blue one is the updated version, which uses a modified version where the dictionary is designed to be like read optimized, and we, we convert the metric problem into a read heavy problem. And you can see it kind of scales very nicely with the number of CPUs. So we went from approximately like 5 million at the 16 core machine to almost like 20, 25 million. So by removing contention, we are able to like extract a lot more juice out of the metric SDK. Uh, but that's not the end of it. It's still like we, we're still not done. So there are plenty of other optimizations which we, which, uh, we have done. So I'll talk about uh, two more just to save time. So first one is how do we avoid the attribute sorting problem? Uh, so what is the attribute sorting problem? So I'll just use this example to explain. So here the user is uh, reporting measurement for uh, fruits again. So here it, the, the user can provide either the name first and then followed by color, or they can do color first and then the name of the fruit itself. So it doesn't matter what order they uh, provide the attributes, ultimately they are all red apples, so they should aggregate together. So if you, if you look at, if you uh, do a lookup, and you, if you want to make sure that they go to the same metric point, you have to do something to make sure, like red apple and apple red, they both are the same. Uh, in Naive, a simple way, which most many languages, including ourselves, we're doing was to sort the attributes using key. So you'll ensure that irrespective of the user provided order, we'll always look up in the sorted way, so we'll accumulate into the same one. But turns out, sorting is a very costly operation. Uh, when I say costly, it's on a relative basis, because like I said in the beginning, I expect the, the latency of measurements to be uh, like somewhere in the nanosecond range, and here I'm showing the cost of sorting just three attributes is like around 130, and the more attributes you have, the cost is keeping going up. So how do we solve that problem? Because it is sometimes like 30 to 50% of the entire cost is just sorting the attributes. So we again leverage the knowledge we have about the metric space where people usually don't change their order intentionally. So if, a, if they always specify like name followed by color, they tend to keep with the same order. Uh, they don't like intentionally change it. So we leverage that information and we, instead of storing just the sorted order, we also store the, uh, we also cache the very first order. Uh, in the user has used. So what that gives us is, the when a measurement comes, we don't sort the attributes, we simply do a lookup in the dictionary, and as long as the user is not changing their order, we'll always succeed. And then we don't, we'll completely avoid the sorting. And of course, if you fail to find, then we have to sort it, so that we'll still be accurate. Uh, so we don't punish the normal usage, but if someone intentionally changes their order, of course, then we have to pay the sorting cost. Uh, so that's one optimization. Uh, this is the last one I'll talk about. Uh, so I, I already mentioned that the API itself is designed to be like zero allocation and we don't have any particular data structure which needs to be heap allocated. Uh, but one thing to note is that API does not do the aggregation. The aggregation is done by a different component in open telemetry called SDK. But then there has to be a way for the API to hand over the measurements into SDK. So for that, uh, we use a data structure in .NET called read-only span, uh, nothing to do with the span in hotel. Uh, it just It's a special data structure which can never leave the stack. So they're always going to be allocated on the stack. So that's one way we ensure that even for inter-process communications, like within the process, we're not going to do any allocation. Uh, however, uh, like to do the lookup, like you got something on the stack, but in .NET, the dictionary cannot be looked up with something on the stack. It, it, there is no API in .NET to look up a dictionary with just the data on the stack. It has to be on a heap. Uh, or it has to be on some like some place other than the stack. So for that, we need like some temporary data structure. So we mostly use thread local uh, so that we don't need to like 
consult the heap and allocate something and later clean it up. So with that, like we were able to keep the allocations to be like zero. So when I say zero, it's literally zero. Uh, so I'll show the final numbers. This is the numbers from the current stable version of .NET SDK. Uh, the blue one, again, here shows that we are like way, way above the original nave design. And even after the optimization, we are able to extract like more juice by doing lots of minor optimization. So we are like hitting around 50 million measurements per second uh, in a like 16 core machine. And you can see it is scaling very nicely. Uh, but most people are also interested in knowing like what's the uh, benchmark result, like how much time it takes for a thread to do a measurement. Uh, so again, see the numbers are like in the low uh, 100 nanoseconds for up to like seven attributes and like really close to like 10 uh, if you have zero. So this again meets our original goal, like metric, it takes like very few nanoseconds to do it. We scale nicely. And uh, I didn't show it here, but all of them has zero allocation. It's like literally zero allocation for up to seven attributes. Uh, I'll give a brief mention about like how do we test because one of the goal is to be like trustworthy. So we do a lot of unit tests where we spin up multiple threads and every thread attempts to update metric points and we ensure that at the end like uh, like all the, the expected output is there uh, irrespective of all the threading optimizations. And on top of that, we also run what we call trust test, which is uh, like we use the entire machine, all the CPU to pump uh, like raw measurements. And we just measure like how we do, how are we, how are we doing in terms of memory, CPU. And we usually let it run for like, not just like seconds, it usually run for like days, sometimes over the weekend or over weeks, just to make sure that even after like prolonged use, we're not leaking any memory, we're not degrading the expected, we're not degrading our latency and things like that. Um, anyway, that's, I mean, I talked all about internal. So if you are an end user, uh, here are like few tips for, tips for you to make the best out of the SDK. Uh, so b the biggest tip I want to give is, if you are using uh, OpenDelimitary.net, like use the provided overloads to pass the attributes. Like don't try to create uh, a wrapper. Uh, with very, very commonly I have seen people like they'll try to be, try to create some helper methods like my matrix helper here, which kind of defeats the whole point of a zero allocation API because it does create a list on the heap and then pass it over. So it doesn't matter how much performance the API and SDK is because if your helper method is going to allocate, it's all like nullified. Uh, there are extreme cases I have seen where people use uh, like an object to accept the value because the value can be integer, float, double. And if some people like create this kind of helpers, they accept like object, of course it causes boxing. So again, we'll, we'll be back into the allocation world. Uh, so anyway, if you ever want to uh, write a wrapper, please do so, but make sure you follow some of the principles which we have been following so that you get the best. And don't change the order of the attributes. If you start with one order, just stick with that so you can really benefit from the optimizations which we have done internally. Uh, so that's the end of the presentation, but definitely not the end of the journey because there are many challenges still remain in .NET. Uh, we're not very good at reclaiming memory. It's still an experimental feature. Uh, the histograms are not as performant as counters. We are still working on it. Uh, we don't have the notion of bound instruments, which a couple of folks mentioned earlier. And we still like, irrespective of all the optimization, it's still like we have some contention because ultimately if you have a 100 core machine and there is a single uh, point where you are aggregating, there is going to be some contention. So we want to move away from uh, that to like thread local, like localized aggregation and harvesting it uh, together at the background thread or at the collection cycle. None of this is done yet, so it's still an ongoing journey. Uh, so if, if you have like ideas or you want to discuss more, please find us on the .NET repo or more likely you'll find me on the Rust repo because .NET is like reasonably stable, so we are not heavily working on things, but Rust is uh, still alpha, so most of the things which I talked about here, all the numbers and slides, uh, the charts, they're like real things from the Rust implementation. The very first chart I showed is from the current uh, release version of OpenTelemetry Rust, and we just improved it to match the second version, and I'm actively working to improve it to the final version. Again, like with Rust, I expect it to be like much more performant than .NET, but feel free to reach out to me or in GitHub or Slack uh, if you want to discuss more about the space. Thank you.